It's red wine politics. What's up, champions? JR Marks here, and this is going to be my first video of many for my new playlist on YouTube called Red Wine Politics, which is the best way to view politics. I have my red wine, and we're going to be watching a video about our Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews and why apparently he's an embarrassment and that he needs to step down from office. Now I already do not agree with that statement because he's doing the bloody best and who are we to criticize him to the point where he should step down? Because we are living right now in hindsight and of course it's that easy to say certain things about him. But how can we do any better compared to what he's doing now? All right. That's all I'm going to say for now. My rest of my political opinions can be done after we watch this video. All right. So let's go. Okay. Cheers. The first up tonight, uh, look, there's an old saying, and it goes that the truth will set you free. Clearly, it's been lost on the Andrews administration. I can't think of a more agrarious crime to impose upon your people than a leader who missed... Agrarious crime. So agrarious. Oh, so non-clantestine. Oh, what a frivolous thing to say. These stupid words half of our journalists of today say about criticising our politics. Now, I get it that no one's above criticism, not me, not anyone, and that's fine. But this rhetoric in, that's included with how we view politics today, is, it's, it's the waste of bloody thought. But anyway, let's go. Let's continue. This leads his or her subjects during a time of deadly crisis. Now, at a time when Victorians are dying by the day because of a second COVID wave, the Premier Daniel Andrews is telling an inquiry... Mm that he was never offered help from the ADF to patrol hotels. I don't believe ADF support was on offer. And ADF support has been provided in very limited circumstances in New South Wales, not to provide security as such, but to provide transportation from uh, the airport to, uh, to hotels. So again, I think it is fundamentally incorrect to assert that there was uh, uh, hundreds of well, ADF staff on offer and premier. somehow someone said no. Yet in a statement, uh, Federal Defence Minister Linda Reynolds very quickly put that to bed. She offered up dates and emails on how many times the ADF uh, offered up that support. And here's what it said. ADF officials asked whether Victorian authorities required assistance with its mandatory quarantine system on multiple occasions. No request for quarantine support was subsequently received from Victoria. It clearly showed a desperate and hapless Victorian Premier prepared to deflect blame at any cost to anybody other than himself. And herein lies the problem with such an arrogant, out-of-touch government. Andrews has black. Like I said before, it's so easy in hindsight to criticise that and other things about the Andrews government. But maybe I'm more grounded in my approach when it comes to politics, but in that moment of time where it said there wasn't support given, like what Andrew said, he's probably right. And then after, it gets find out that they did offer support. Well, maybe he didn't directly hear from them. Maybe one of his representatives did, but they didn't tell him. And, you know, I could tell already that there is some kind of political agenda to get rid of Daniel Andrews from his position. But, you know, no, I don't agree with it. He should stay as prime Premier. So he, he's, a, he's been the front of this since COVID started and he should be the front when this ends, okay? And then from that, his cabinet will learn and pick up where what went wrong and will be better for it okay that's just common sense 
Let's continue. Bastard and obfuscated on issues since he became Labor leader in Victoria. He's been aided and abetted by a compliant media in Victoria who foster and encourage his lack of transparency. That's not true. You can't say that there was complacent media when this guy in media is criticising him. I mean, that's a contradiction at best. <laughs> but here's where his arrogance came unstuck. Now, you can lie about a scandal where you put Labor people into electorate offices to run how is he lying? Seriously, how is he lying about certain things? Okay, maybe he doesn't say specific things that we find out later ahead of time, but it's not like he's deliberately being devious, okay? The guy's doing the utmost best he can, and so is his cabinet and his associates. I mean, like anyone else could do a better job. Okay, because it's not like any of us knew in Australia that this was going to happen ahead of time. Because we didn't. Okay. I've, I have to give Daniel Andrews the, the, all the credit he's due for hanging in there. Not cracking under pressure. I mean, I would personally crack under pressure if I was in his position. I mean, anyone would. Regardless of how experienced you are in politics. Because this shit has never, this COVID, whatever, has never happened ever in Australia. Yet, let alone the whole world. I mean, there's been previous plagues and diseases in the past. But, you know, that was back in a time when medicine was still new to these things. But now, we've got a lot of medical history and know-how to defend, at least defend well against this stuff. So, you know. We shouldn't be so quick to judge, regardless of your political views. Campaigns while on the public purse. That was the so-called red shirt scandal. But nobody died. You can lie about branch stacking and dismiss it as the ramblings of a rogue operative. But nobody died. But when you put the health of your people at risk, many paying the ultimate price, and you try to shift the blame through an absolute whopper, the public are just not going to cop it. Andrews must resign. The Victorian Premier must resign. He's now becoming an embarrassment to a... Bullshit. This guy's opinion, regardless of a journalist and how long he's been in the game of, poli of journalism, he is not the representative of every Australian, okay? One side might hate him, the other side loves him, and there's a, probably a side that's indifferent to it. I know I'm indifferent to it because I don't know everything that's going on. And it makes sense for people, regardless of their position of politics or journalism, to smack, to admit that, but they don't know everything that's going on. So, no, I can't agree with this. Australian politics. This is the sort of stuff you borrow from the playbook of Putin. MH17 comes to mind. Or China. If he was honourable, he'd fall on his sword. But of course, that's not part of his MO. He'll stick around, and every day that he's Premier, he'll remind Victorians of his abject failure at protecting them from this hideous... Piss off, you overzealous bullshit analyzer. I mean, come on. At least, if you're a journalist, at least have some integrity onto who you're talking about. Don't just shit on him. I mean, come on. Look, regardless of what happens to Mr. the Premier, obviously at some point he's going to step down, whether it's he's forced to or not. But, you know, I would never force nobody. You should, we should all be getting behind him so he do it better instead of criticising every little thing he does. I mean, God, the stress enough would get to the average person if they were in Daniel Andrews' position. I mean, and you don't have to be much an, of an educated person to realise that. As far as, you had one job, Daniel Andrews, and the rest of the country is also.
pain oh, for this well. All right, that was a quick video. Um, I still think the Premier deserves more credit than he's getting, and I don't think he should stand down, and I don't think he should apologise any time soon. Let this virus pass into something we can control in the future, and then once things get back to normal, then the Premier can apologise for what fault he's done within this situation, okay? Other than that, this has been my first video of red wine politics. Ah, so good. Cheers and good health to all of you during this time. See you for the next video, okay?